Hello, welcome to another edition of Theology Prepper. My name is John, and we're walking through a book by Puritan author Thomas Brooks called Precious Remedies Against Satan's Devices. And what I'm hoping we take away from it is just some of the gleanings from the book, not doing a full review, not even looking at you know everything in every chapter, uh, but more or less just looking at the arguments that uh, Pastor Brooks uh, takes in his analysis of the way the world, the flesh, and the devil comes at Christians. Uh, and if you know the tactics by which something's going to come at you, you can prepare a defense or, or in some cases prepare a counter offense to those things that come at you. Um, in, in many different ways, the world, the flesh, and the devil try to come at Christians to bring us down, make us sad, bring, you know, and just cripple things in the world to where uh, you, you're not as maybe effective as you feel in your Christian walk, or you don't feel as on fire, things like that. Um, but, but the notion behind those things is if you understand what's going on and how that's working against you, you can go to scripture, you can go to God in prayer and work to overcome those things to, to not just feel better, but to know what's going on and how God can use you in and through those very circumstances. So uh, within the last sections, we looked at several different things. We're entering a new section of the book. It's, it's pretty short, um, but it's, it's called Satan's Devices to Destroy and Ensnare All Sorts and Ranks of Men in the World. So, so kind of those general concepts that we would maybe say are worldly concepts that are out there that, that really work against us really work against Christianity and the gospel. Um, something that, that, that I guess you would almost refer to it as the, the systems that are in place that kind of keep Christianity or things about it uh, suppressed. So within this section, the subsection is for today, devices against the great and honorable of the earth. So, so what things are out there that go against kind of the, the leadership, the kings, rulers, princes, you know, presidents, ambassadors, and, and government officials? You know, what things are presented against them that we see or that Thomas Brooks even saw back in his time uh, that caused them, it, to today's reasoning, by causing them to seek greatness, position, riches, and security. Um, you know, we've all heard the, the, the saying, you know, power corrupts, ultimate power, you know, corrupts ultimately. You know, it's, it, it's one of those things where, where people that are in these high positions can get manipulated by the very system they're asked to rule over and, and it becomes kind of a means until its end. And they, they then seek and want more of the power or the greatness or the riches, the fame, the recognition, whatever that comes from them. In Jesus's day, the scribes, the Pharisees, and you know, all those people, you know, Jesus says they did many things to be seen by others. You know, and they loved the best seats in the synagogues and other places and you know, all that kind of stuff. Well, it's it's not so different in our day and age. So I'm going to run through, as different as I used to do, I'd run through each of his remedies for this one at a time, and we'd discuss. So I'm going to read them all together this time, and then we'll just kind of discuss them as a whole because they kind of group together. So when we see this type of corruption in high officials, we'll just call them that. He says remedies. It says, one, uh, self-seeking sets men upon sins against the law, the gospel, and nature itself. Then two, our remedy is to be that self-seeking exceedingly abases a man. Uh, three, the word, so scripture, pronounces curses and woes against self-seekers. Four, Self-seekers are self-losers and self-destroyers. Um, five, saints have denied self and set public good above personal advantage. And sixth, self-hinderers 
in the sight of divine things, hence prophets and apostles when seeing visions were carried out of themselves. So in looking at all of these, when, when you see that corruption forming in high officials, um, you don't see this usually within the church. It absolutely does happen and can happen within the church. Even some denominations are said to be so hierarchical uh, that it, again, it, it's kind of a corrupt entity unto itself. Um, but, but you look at scripture and, and just as a, an idea or as an example, Peter, you know, Peter, before the arrest of Christ, you know, Peter, you know, oh, Lord, should this never happen to you? Or, oh, Lord, if any of these flee, I never will. And, you know, and, oh, Lord, you know, may it never be that you would go to the cross and things like that. You know, very arrogant, very bold about himself. Uh, within the disciples, one of the occasions where they're walking along the road with Jesus, Jesus overhears that they're grumbling amongst themselves about who is the greatest, even of these, these followers of Christ. So it happens. It's part of sin. So it's part of us that we want to see and seek greatness. Um, but Jesus teaches directly against that. In the restoration of Peter, we have, you know, three times he is told, feed my sheep. In other words, don't worry about your own greatness. Don't worry about what you're going to do. Your job is to serve others. Jesus in washing the disciples' feet. He's in a sense teaching them right then and there. Hey, I've come as your master and I've washed your feet. So what does that say? If I've come to serve you, you're then in place to serve others. Uh, it, it's usually within government offices and high officials of different sorts that they say they're there for the people or for the, the public good or, you know, uh, uh, police mottos usually on their, their, their cars and stuff to serve and protect. Well, but in some cases, the, the service is almost an affront uh, especially in certain public figures, because it, it is about the, the position, the greatness, the riches, the power, whatever it is that's there that one wants for themselves, not necessarily for the good of others. Uh, in the remedies that Thomas Brooks talked to us about, he says that these types of sins are against the law and the gospel. Well, yeah, absolutely. If you look at the law or, you know, summarized in the Ten Commandments, those things are very outward focused uh, things towards God and things towards our neighbor uh, they're not selfishly about ourselves they're how do we treat others you know we look outward to others first uh, so in that sense it's basically against nature uh, and and it's self-seeking it, it goes against then our own premise for existing to want to get when we're supposed to be something that's created to give and serve others. Um, that the word pronounces curses against such attitudes, yeah, that's abundantly clear, Old Testament and New, that this type of selfishness, this power-hungry type of attitude is to be deplored. It's not a good thing. Um, and you see within Scripture that one of the focuses uh, throughout, again, both Old and New Testament is to be someone who serves others. Um, uh, if, if you think about the, this self-abasement, um, one of his, his points was there in section, or uh, remedy four, self-seekers are self-losers and self-destroyers. You know, in, in our day, age, and culture, it's like, if you don't go after it, no one's going to give it to you. And, you, know, you. You just need to just do it. And, and it's this, this goal-setting, motivational type of standards that you know, you're striving to get something almost to the, ne the neglect of others. Um, almost, I don't want to say that's in every case, but a lot of goal-setting things and, and job markets and stuff like that, it, it, it's very you're going to go get this and you're going to go set things up and you're going to make sure that things happen in your life and all this kind of stuff. But 
but again that that goes against in a sense our very nature to not want to be pulling everybody along with us that we're all advancing together as a culture that we're all carrying one another's burdens that we're looking out for one another holistically not just for my own selfish needs and things like that um one example of this to me is if you go back and look at things like pascal's wager uh, blaze pascal you know brilliant man and all of this stuff but his wager is incorrectly used sometimes because it it's not a measure of do you believe in god or not it's more or less a proof text that sin exists because within pascal's wager it's does man seek his greatest good well no he does not because out of the four box square that he creates two are neutral you know if you believe in god but he doesn't exist he's safe if god exists but you know you don't believe you know all these things two are neutral one's good one's bad so you should really be looking at then for just the one bad one if god exists and you don't believe in him then you you're in jeopardy you're you're in eternal jeopardy and that's supposed to be the key box because out of those premises if man is ever looking out for his greater greatest greater good you would say well then clearly if eternity is in the balance everybody would logically move towards this concept of i should obey believe in god and do everything that's right because eternity is in the balance but people don't you know rarely do people do this because in sin man seeks his own good and we see logically he's not doing that man in sin is not seeking his own good which would be to love God, love thy neighbor, all those types of things, the outward stuff. But instead, man is in sin turned on himself, you know, navel gazing. He's staring at his own belly saying, how do I appease and fill myself? And that's wrong. Um, so here again, it's just a, a tactic of Satan uh, for, again, a lot of the great and honorable people of the world, at least in their titles and their positions. Uh, and if you know, you know someone that's in those positions, pray for them. If you're one of those people in those positions, hey, take these remedies to heart. Don't be self-seeking. Be outwardly serving. Um, and that, that's it for this time, for this week. We'll look at the next section next week, continuing in this, uh, these different types of attacks that uh, are waged against uh, believers in the world. Uh, but thanks for watching. God bless, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.